Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Mark Kaplan, CEO and founder of, uh, of uh, Very Cloud, actually. So, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the, um, the, today I'm going to tell you about uh, joint work that we performed with uh, Deutsche Telekom in, uh, in uh, Germany. Uh, just a few words about uh, the company before Very Cloud. We are a startup based in, um, in Paris, France. We work on quantum communications uh, with, um, I would say, both a strong focus on applications, what are quantum networks good for, and also a long-term vision. Uh, so today, most of my talk is going to be about quantum key distribution. And uh, if you want to, to know more about the motivations behind quantum key distributions, I also suggest you to, to come to the round table that we are having this afternoon. Uh, but at the end of my talk, I will also share with you longer term pr perspectives on why, uh, I mean, how, how we see the, the development of uh, quantum communication networks beyond QKD. All right, so uh, here's the outline. I'm going to give you a little bit of con context here, uh, the context in which we work, uh, motivations, why we build what we're doing, uh, present the results, of course, of this experimental work that we performed with uh, Deutsche Telekom and discuss further applications, as I was saying. So the context here is that, uh, as, I, uh, as I said in the beginning, I come from, from Europe, uh, we're based in Paris, and Europe currently has a strong push toward uh, quantum communication. Communication infrastructures with uh, this EuroQCI project, it's the umbrella project, that aims at connecting 27 member states by the end of the decade. Of course, it's very, uh, it's very uh, ambitious. Uh, let's see what, what happens. Um, but you see, especially in this artistic view here of the, the future network, you have local, uh, local area nodes and uh, all the way to, to satellites. Right? So it includes a lot of different, uh, different technologies. Um, it is currently mostly focused on quantum key distribution and actually the work that I'm going to present uh, occurred in this ramp-up phase called OpenQKD, uh, which aims at developing quantum key distribution technologies, uh, but it's also looking at further, further steps. Uh, okay, so what's the, what's the motivation here is that we know that uh, quantum key distribution among the, the, the quantum uh, technologies is one of the most mature. Uh, you can buy devices from also some of the companies here uh, in the room today, uh, and uh, you can use them to build a network, but the, the main point is that quantum key distribution is only point to point, right? And when you build, uh, when you go from the point to point solution, to, from the point to point situation here to a network, you have to, uh, think about how to do that, right? So one, the, the standard way uh, of doing it, if you think about the network situation here, is to stack pairs of devices on each edge of the network. It has consequences both on the, on the cost, right? Because usually the cost is high, uh, but also on the, um, on the security, because if you want to, 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 to have a key established by quantum key distribution between non-adjacent nodes, you need to route it. Uh, through edges of, uh, of the network, and uh, the intermediate nodes will have a clear copy, a clear view of the key. Uh, I'm not saying it's a problem for everyone. When we speak with telecom operators, usually they tell us, but we know very well how to build these trusty nodes in practice, but it adds to the overall cost of, uh, of these infrastructures, right? So the goal of the project was to, ev to uh, evaluate a new solution that we have proposed at, uh, at Very Cloud, uh, which is a trusted node-free uh, infrastructure uh, to, to build this sort of metropolitan area scale. This is a, a map actually of the, the, Berlin, uh, the Berlin area. Uh, so to build a metropolitan area scale quantum communication networks. So how does it work? Well, first the, the, the name of this solution, we call it uh, Q-Line because all the parties are on a line here, right? You see, uh, think about Alice and Bob here at the end of the, uh, the two ends of the line as uh, being very, very standard uh, quantum key distribution devices. What it means is that Alice is equipped by, by, with a laser here that allows her to generate uh, quantum information in the, in the form of single photon states. And Bob uh, can detect 
uh, or read the quantum state that is in the in the uh, sorry read the quantum state that is in the photon that uh, it receives. Right. <clears throat> so we know that this is sufficient for doing quantum key distribution. Alice and Baum can establish a key uh, with this process. What we suggest is to uh, scale the network by adding these intermediate nodes here. Charlie, we call them the Charlies, one, two, three, to n. And Charlie, as you can see, is only equipped with the phase modulator. Right? A phase modulator is a piece of standard e telecom equipment. It's, um, it's cheap. Uh, let's put it that way. It's cheap. And what it does in practice, if you think of, as Alice as generating a quantum state, Bob as measuring it, what it does in the middle, it just rotates the quantum state. And nevertheless, uh, what, we, what we showed, what actually was known for, for a while, uh, is that this is sufficient for any of the Charlies, well, any, any party, any pair of participants to, uh, to establish a shared secret key, right? So now, uh, think about, you know, the, the, the physical design of the network is just a line, whereas the virtual uh, design is a fully meshed network uh, in the sense that any pair of participants can, can get a shared key. So we get the same functionality as quantum key distribution, with a different architecture, uh, which is both uh, inexpensive and also avoiding key routing. Uh, <clears throat> the, the counterpart for that, right, there is no magic trick here, is that, as I was saying, Alice and Bob, you can think of, about them as standard quantum key distribution design, meaning that uh, the, the distance here, the total distance of the network is the distance of standard QKD, right, so short, short distance. That's why uh, we uh, deployed it for metropolitan area scale network. Very brief outline of the, of the protocol here. Uh, again, as I was saying, you can think about Alice as generating a quantum state, so it's encoded into a rotation here uh, between, the, between the standard QKD states. Bob is measuring the quantum state in some measurement basis, and here adding the rotations, what we get in the end, just look at the, right, the last uh, expression here, what we get in the end is that in QKD, we would have two parties uh, sharing uh, a key at the end. Whereas here, what we have is three parties sharing, well, getting keys that all sum to zero, right? So this, once you have this, it suffices that one party reveals its keys, its key, sorry, and the two remaining ones have a shared key. And it scales. If you add more parties, uh, if you had, had Charlie 2, Charlie 3, uh, you would have uh, intermediate nodes here, so you would have a sum of the sum of all the keys summing to zero. So all the parties can just reveal uh, their their uh, their key, and and the remaining two have uh, have a, the, a shared encryption key. Right. So very, it's a very simple expansion over QKD. Right. Building these inter intermediate boxes is strictly speak. It's strictly easier than building a QKD. Uh, a QKD device. Uh, we tested it uh, by deploying it in the, this network in, uh, in Berlin in two configurations. The first one is the line, but then the idea of our partners uh, at uh, Deutsche Telekom was to go further here and to also multiplex several of those lines together. You see, multiplexing using different frequencies, blue, green, and, uh, and red, and assemble them, so, so merging them, sorry, uh, with a single um, a single uh, detector at the end, because this is the uh, this is the costly part of the of the network, and you can see actually what you get in the end is more like a like a metro like a subway uh, subway map, right? With uh, some of the some of the branches going to uh, going to the center, right? So. Uh, I was supposed to give this presentation with my colleague at Deutsche Telekom, and of course they would have presented uh, the, the technical results of the of the of, of the experiment. I, I, they couldn't make it, unfortunately. What I can, I, what, I think, what is interesting here is that, as I was saying, it's it's a very tiny improvement, let's say, or it's a it's a very very tiny step uh, fr from QKD, but it requires a complete. Um, technical analysis, right? As simple as it is, it's absolutely not off the shelf, uh, and uh, you need to test it. We needed to test it in, in real film. We got some uh, takeaway messages here. Uh, well, uh, 
uh, about the, the stability of the uh, sorry, the stability of the of the result. We used very standard indicators, uh, quantum quantum bit, uh, sorry, uh, quantum bit error rate, qubit error rate, sorry, and secret uh, secret key rate, showing that uh, we get uh, stable performances over time uh, in this uh, in this network. Second takeaway here uh, now. So this is exactly sorry. This is what was tested here. The, the, the simpler building block here was to merge uh, these two lines together in a single, uh, in a single bub, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, with a single bub, sorry, and you can see over different, uh, different distances connecting two different sites in the Berlin uh, metropolitan area. Uh, so the qubit error rate, in terms of qubit error rate, uh, we, depends a lot on the, on the wavelength not so much on the on the distance, uh, actually. So these are very very good indicators that uh, this is a technology that can be uh, that can be deployed, right? Again, the counterpart to that is that there is a, there is a price to pay. You remember when I described the protocol, I said you first establish this big correlation between all the players, and they and then uh, all but two of them reveal their secret output actually to allow the, the remaining two to share a secret key. What it means is that we, uh, the, the price to pay is a uh, suboptimal, uh, suboptimal key rate, right? The, the single photon detector that we use at, uh, at Bob is a resource that has to be shared by everyone so that you cannot re uh, really overcome that. Uh, this, is the, this is the price to pay when uh, deploying uh, our solution. Okay. <clears throat> Just a few words on the, the next steps. Uh, the, the reason we, we developed this, uh, this solution was also to go further and consider the next stages of quantum networks. And I want to present you two, two use cases uh, that we are building at the, at the moment or that we are um, deploying. The first one is to use uh, quantum key distribution or in particular Q-Line to connect servers in a in a cloud infrastructure. And the reason for, do, for doing this, again, um, is not new. It's not something that we have invented. We just claim that this Q-Line architecture is very well suited for this use case. But the reason to do that is because uh, when, you, um, when you combine quantum communication and quantum key distribution with uh, classical cryptographic method, you transfer the advantages of, uh, of quantum key distribution, which are long-term security of your data in particular, you transfer them uh, from data in transit to data at rest. And building such an infrastructure, you would get a very, very high uh, data security. Uh, what you can uh, enforce is that if an eavesdropper wants to attack or learn the data that are distributed into the server, it has to attack several servers all at the same time. Right? So it's a very, very uh, strong model of, uh, of security. And we're also investigating further applications in terms of confidential computing. So confidential computing is a, a setup where uh, the, the uh, input of the problem is distributed among different, uh, different participants. And they want to all uh, solve a problem together without revealing their, their private data. Last but not least, uh, this, ex this is actually the, the, the real reason we started working on, uh, on quantum communication. What, we, what was our first interest at, uh, at Very Cloud was secure quantum cloud computing. Quantum cloud computing meaning, so well, of course, uh, we've probably all of us uh, have already experimented with quantum computers uh, in the cloud, right? I was doing it since uh, 2015 when IBM put uh, his, uh, his quantum computer in the cloud. And you know very well that if you want to run the computation there, you have to send a clear copy of your uh, program and everything is executed. Uh, the quantum processor uh, operator, the QPU operator, gets a clear copy of the program, inputs, outputs, right? And this is a problem today, right? If you're a bank and you want to um, uh, do portfolio uh, POC on portfolio experiment, uh, portfolio optimization, uh, you might not be allowed to send all those data uh, to to a third party, right? And if you invest a lot. Uh, on R&D, for example, in um, uh, power grid optimization. I don't know. 
then it might not be something that you want to share with, uh, with a third party. And what has been known for a while is that once we'll have quantum computer and connect them to quantum communication networks, there's a way to naturally encrypt the, the data, uh, sorry, naturally in, uh, encrypt the data, algorithm, and output, right? And what we have showed recently in a, in a research lab in a joint collaboration with the University of Rome, Rome uh, Italy, uh, is that these very simple devices that we use to uh, scale quantum key distribution to, to, to increase the, the, the connectivity of the network, we can also use them to, uh, to, to, delegate, to delegate the computation to a quantum computer in a fully encrypted way. And it's something that is called blind quantum computing. And it turns out, so that this sort of clients not only they are arguably the simplest clients that can do uh, blind quantum computing, but they, go, they can also run some joint computation where no one learns anything about the other's uh, inputs and outputs. So think about distributed uh, quantum machine learning, for example. You could have one party here providing the algorithm, one party here providing the data, one, the third party providing the, um, uh, the, the computational power, right? And no one learns anything about the other's uh, inputs, outputs. So the, the, the party providing the al algorithm would not learn directly the data and vice versa. Uh, again, this is something that we, we demonstrated some, some building blocks for, for this uh, in, in a lab, right? But we are um, also looking forward to, uh, to, to partner with quantum computing companies to do, to do a, an implementation here with commercial partners. Should happen in the, in the future. Okay, so just to wrap up, uh, we uh, introduced this Q-Line solution. Q-Line solu uh, is a solution that uh, we are currently uh, uh, commercializing at the, uh, as the, the solution for the last mile of quantum communication networks. Right? So in these metropolitan areas, K, uh, sorry, in metropolitan areas, you can combine the Q-Lines together to build your architecture. This is very close to what we've been doing with the Deutsche Telekom. Uh, and then, what we also like very much about it is that it's a solution that remains relevant in this future uh, of uh, quantum networking where quantum computers get connected to, uh, to the networks. All right, it's pretty much it. I have like one conclusion slide. Uh, I don't want to, uh, to say anything about the performances or, or anything, but of course, for us, uh, very cloud, it was the, the validation that we could uh, deploy our technology at scale, and this is something that we've, since this work, have put in production. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark, for a, for a nice talk. Uh, we have a couple minutes for questions. Yeah. Go ahead. I didn't understand the beginning of your questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, <clears throat> in general, I mean the the. Straightforward. I mean, not so not Mark, so easy. Mark, can you repeat the question? For the oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. The the question is how the the ransomware um, uh, the ransomware attacks are is putting urgency over the deployment of such solutions. Is it a good summary? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, an answer to ransomwares, which is not that straightforward in practice, is to have more redundant redundancy, right? Uh, over the data. But of course, at the same time, uh, when you have add more redundancy, uh, you, so, it, so because if one, uh, one s s uh, storage server is, um, uh, is failing, sorry, you, you still have the others to recover your data, right? But on the other hand, when you add more redundancy, you also increase the attack surface. Uh, so what I like uh, very much about this solution that I presented earlier here 
right? And again, it's not our our work. I mean, we, we didn't present the full stack ourselves. We just claim that this is a very good uh, technology to do, to do it. What we what we get in the end is a different trade-off between security and availability. And you can actually parameterize it the way you want because I said the eavesdropper needs to attack several servers all at the same time. And this several is a parameter of the system. So you can tune it to match the best your, your security, uh, security needs. Uh, another way to think about it, uh, because the server, sorry, the eavesdropper needs to attack several servers all at the same time, I like to think about it as um, exponential security because rather than having the security of the system being equal to the weakest link, uh, the, um, the, the eavesdropper needs to break several, uh, several security measures, actually all at the same time, uh, but several security measures to, uh, to break into the, the data. We have time for one more short question. I, I think you said that you, the, the implementation uses trusted relay nodes. Is that correct? And where would they be located? So the, <clears throat> okay. The, 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 so implementation of quantum networks, uh, of large scale quantum or QKD networks uses uh, trusted nodes. Uh, I can't tell you exactly where they will be located. The, again, the telecom operators tell us we know very well how to build them. It adds to the cost. Actually, this is actually the, one of the main factors that, uh, that makes it complicated. Uh, what, what we claim, right, is to have this solution for the last mile. Uh, and in, in our solution, we don't use trusted relays. So we can have several, think about governmental buildings, actually they are usually well secured, but, uh, but think about uh, yeah, the financial institutions. And so you, you could connect several of them to the backbone. The backbone would use the, the trusted relays, but you don't need the trusted relay, relays on our architecture. Mm -hmm.